Okay. Okay. Hi guys, welcome back to the MCM Comic Con in London. We are live on the MCM bus stage and I'm so glad to welcome two fantastic vigilantes all the way from Arrow. Please welcome Willa Holland to Katrina Law. Hey! <laughs> Hi guys, wow. thanks for coming like out. <laughs> sup, sup. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here, I'm really chuffed, and it's fantastic to see you guys. You look amazing. I'm slightly disappointed that you're not in your outfits, though. <laughs> well, we were going to wear them, but they got yeah. lost um, oh. by our, on our airline Yeah, luggage. you know, they, they lost the, the bag. Yeah, and, it was um, so sad. Oh. It, was a, it was a sad affair, you know? Mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. happened. But we were totally going to wear our costumes. Totally. It's okay. the right place to do it. We <laughs> wish, honestly, we wish we really could, but they don't let us take them anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Something about getting like arrested. lost in key in a closet, and yeah. I can't even wear it unless I'm working in it. Yeah. Not even for fun. You not get even arrested for Halloween. Anyway. Yeah. Just getting arrested it. for stealing Arrow property or something legal like that. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. I always wondered if they do like a little tidbit on the show where they kind of show how you wash those leathers or how you get them off those mannequins so quickly. Febreze. Yeah. Yeah, because it's really sweaty at the end of the day. I mean, it's really difficult pulling off those pants. I mean, but we don't sweat though. Because I we're don't. super heroes and we we don't actually I have, have super sweat pores. Plants. Yes, that don't sweat. I smell like you a field yourself? of roses mm -hmm. every day. True story. Even with the week without showering. Truer story. Smell wow. me. <laughs> this panel has really gone yeah. off so far. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I love the panel. Yeah, Welcome to my brain. Back. Should we bring it back slightly and maybe talk about <laughs> the finale? <laughs> Because I love the finale. And um, if you guys haven't watched it, I'm not sure why you're here, but I need to talk about it. So uh, <laughs> um, so obviously, at the end of it, everyone's going off, doing their thing. So what's going to happen to Willow and everybody? You, your character and your character. Are you going to come back in a few months' time and take up where you left off? I mean, here's the thing, guys. I s honestly don't know. They have not told me, and I keep on begging for any information on what's happening. But, you know, it's a DC comic book show, and it's Arrow, and they don't like to tell anybody a single thing, even the people working on it. But your contract is a comeback. My, so I mean, we, we are coming back. <laughs> uh, you will see everybody who left come home eventually on their own own terms it may take some others longer than than a few but uh basically i think it's you know just our bit of an homage to last year's finale how all of our felicity ran off and they needed to go find their separate ways now it's kind of our turn to figure out what our place is in not only the team but also in starling city or star city now because Obviously, things have gone a little awry. <laughs> Just a little. And, you know, tempers are a little high. And uh, it's, it's been a little dramatic lately, mm -hmm. per se. So I think everybody needs a bit of, you know, vacation and Corte Maltese. And uh, yeah. some, some laying on a and beach. And new in, haircuts uh, yeah, to come back with. I want to do something crazy to my hair, but they won't let me. I wanted to dye it pink like Emily. She's cooler Looks than great. I am. Looks great, yeah. Pinky purple streaks. I mean, I would just like do anything. I would try to dye neon green. Like, why not? Shave an arrow on the top of my head, guys. Let's do this. <laughs> I think and you should all tweet to the arrow writers and producers that Willa should be able to dye her hair green to match her eyes into a, and then shave it into a mohawk. Right? Right? And then just have it instead Can we just of actually like, like a massive pointed arrow spikes yeah. up in the air. And then, I mean, we'll have to poke holes in my hood, obviously. This is jet lag. This is total Sorry. jet lag. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you start lying down on the floor, then we, oh then we might have to talk. I could do that right now. If you want to, go for it. The rug is comfy. Paul Amos has told us. I'll hold off. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, Nissa, we've got to wonder what she's been up to. Because since she disbanded the league, has she been on holiday? Because I would love to see Nissa on holiday. Um, well, she's going to open a bake shop. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. I she's think got she, cooking skills from Nanda. Yeah, Pala. she she's got some cooking skills. Uh, her secret ingredient, don't tell, but I'm gonna. It's yak milk from <laughs> Nanda Parbat, <laughs> but don't tell people. This is just between us. And um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's, it has like a different kind of texture. Like cupcakes. Yeah, yeah. It's like thing. super creamy cupcakes. Um, yeah, I've so, eaten them. They're great. Mm -hmm. So she's doing that, and I think she's gonna. Um, I don't know. Maybe do some work with children. 
I think she's. I think she'd be really good with children. She would get them in line pretty uh -huh. quickly. I think. Yep. It's very militant style, but you know they they respond well to that. So yes. Fair enough. children yeah. respond to discipline so well. well. While everyone else is away, I think Alistia will play. They're in the lair on their own all this time. What do you think is going to happen? I think she's going to try on all of our costumes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to see her running around trying on the costume, like putting on Diggle's costume and just like swimming in the thing. Her whole body would fit in the left arm sleeve. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, she's probably just going to be Maxing and relaxing in the lair, throw a sauna bed in there or something. I don't know, tanning up. And come back and it'll be all colorful in there. <laughs> it will be very colorful in there. It'll turn into like a 1995 rave. And um, in terms of Nissa and Oliver and Felicity, I mean, Nissa seems to covet her marriage in a way to Oliver because she respects him. So do you think that she'll kind of approve of you know his other relationships and? Do you think there'll ever be a confrontation between Felicity and Nissa? Because they've never really discussed it, the whole well, War of the Wives in a way. I do think that Nissa really does respect the marriage to Oliver. And no matter what happens, she will always be first wife. So... <laughs> number one. Yeah, always number one. So Felicity, if she wants to come along, you know, have, like, you know, the leftovers. Right. It's okay. It's cool. Nissa's all about sharing and caring and, you know... <laughs> You know, it's, it's, a, it's a wide world out there, and it's not traditional as we once thought. So right. I think she'd be open to um, maybe having Oliver go to the kitchen to make us some tea while, right. you know, Felicity and I... Um, knitting in the corner. Knitting in the corner. So maybe a love triangle there a little bit. Yeah, kind more, of. Like more, more, like more like a, a love, like a big a, love type situation. And yeah, <laughs> like, a, <laughs> like mine, you go cook something. And... <laughs> I think, I think we could work it out. <laughs> I hope so. Well, because we would love to see Nissa, I think, in Team Arrow. I mean, you lacking a few female partners now, so. Yeah, we need to keep the female thing going. Mm. So come, come join us, please. I think. <laughs> Stop well, kicking and come to the lab. I know. Well, one of my favorite things about this show, and the writers do such a great job about it, is having the women be strong, independent women that have these wonderful storylines that don't revolve around men. And not that that's a bad thing, but most of the time you get to see the men having fighting for freedom, fighting for glory, fighting for justice, and then the women kind of supporting the men on that journey. And it's so lovely because you get to see all of these wonderful female characters getting to fight equally for justice and freedom and, and everything that's right, and, and also love. So I, I think they do such a wonderful job. So yeah, if my character could join up with Team Arrow, I think she'd be stoked. And I think she has a lot to learn from people like Speedy and from... Um, Felicity and all that they have a lot to teach her. Sure. Yeah. But uh, I'm wondering, is there going to be a bit of a bone of contention between Nyssa and Thea? Because essentially Nyssa bargained with Thea's lie in order to try and get uh, Malcolm. Do I out know of that? Yeah. Well, that's what I was wondering. Does you know, do you know I, that? And would you? I mean, my life or Thea's it? life gets played with so much <laughs> to the point where I, I think she just is thoroughly expecting it from every human that enters her life. She says like, okay, hi, your name's John, you're gonna lie to me at some point, cool, great. Hi, Steve, you're gonna hurt me, it's cool, I'm used to it. <laughs> well, I think we've already established our relationship when I hung her upside down. Oh yeah, that's right. right. So, there's, yeah, there's I, yeah, multiple No, issues. I'm probably <laughs> expecting it, you know? Again, like it's everybody yeah. who walks into Thea's life is just there to hurt her in some sh shape or form, and she's just like, I'm used to that, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to go to fan questions in just a moment, but one of the great moments of this season was finally we see Nissa and Sarah reunite, but in Legends, really. Yes. Um, but one thing was, that was unclear to me is when was that in the timeline? Um, basically, she went back in time when Nissa was being locked in the dungeon by Malcolm after she destroyed the Lazarus Pit. So that was the first time that Nissa realized, one, Sarah was still... Um, alive but also sane because last time she saw her she was a wild beast and therefore she um, basically destroyed the pit because of that reason so I think it was just this bittersweet ending but also knowing that Sarah had left a league of assassins and also Nyssa because she couldn't live that life anymore she was basically saying I love you with all of my heart you are my soulmate but I don't want you to live a life that you that's gonna hurt you so please go and do your thing and be free and sure 
So I think it was a really, really lovely, sad, bittersweet moment between the two of them. Well, it was certainly something that fans were waiting for. And yes. something else I think that fans would love to see is when Nissa and Sarah first met. Do you think it was love at first sight? <laughs> I don't know that love at first sight. I think it would be intrigue at first sight. Um, I don't even know that Nissa had been in a relationship prior to that. So I don't know that she would understand what those feelings were because she was all about combat and training and following her dad's orders, let alone having a woman to be attracted to. So um, I think it definitely grew out of respect and then just seeing how freeing um, and carefree and loving Sarah was as opposed to the world that she'd grow up. So I think it was a kind of infatuation that kind of yeah. creeped in. I think the Land Sisters in general had such a massive effect on Nissa's life and right. teaching her that the world's not black and white or right or wrong. There's actually gray areas and yeah. that you don't have to listen to somebody absolutely like your father and uh one of the other relationships that we love on arrow is roy and theo and i'm so happy oh. that roy is back next season Yay. Yay. i know guys we get colton back so yeah. what's that going to be like roy and theo working together i mean i can't wait for the moment they actually let us wear our suits in the same scene <laughs> but also we need to discuss how we can do that because right. i did take his yep. and redo it so I don't understand how he got, I mean, maybe he remade his own. Maybe, maybe. And then ha he's, he's got to have two of them, right? One was at the dry cleaners one day and he just needs his suit. So yeah. oh, he's going to go back to the hoodie again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's not going to be running around in just a hood sweater anymore. But um, yeah, I, we were just talking about that two weeks ago. I was with him and we are so excited. The fact that he's coming back. The whole show has just been missing some, some energy from his, yeah. his disappearance, and, and now we get it back, and we're all so excited, and we hope that he stays forever, and we might like him in a cage with no key and keep him there forever. Yay! He has no <laughs> choice. But um, we mentioned this previously, well, we discussed it previously, but there is an, um, a scene, a deleted scene in episode 406, where Oliver gives Thea some dating advice, and I would love to see that um, about dating Alex. Can you tell us yeah. what happened in that scene? I'm vaguely remembering that one. Um, <laughs> there's been a lot that we've filmed in the last year, I'll tell you that, and a lot that we've filmed that has been deleted, um, so it kind of gets lost in the mix of it. But it was uh, kind of interesting. I remember reading that and just being like, really? Yeah. Oliver's going to give me dating advice? Right? He's the one to give that right now? Uh, okay. I mean, clearly he's... He's changed a bit, you know, he's got a better head on his shoulder now that Felicity's kind of locked him down. Um, but, I mean, scenes with me and Steven are always hilariously interesting because we have to be like brother, sister-y, bondy, and we just can't really, none of us can take each other seriously. Right. So I just remember it being this moment where I was like, honestly, Steven, I don't think I would take dating advice from you. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna listen to it, but I don't think I'm gonna actually act upon it. Yeah, no. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to go to the fans now. So stick your hands up and I'll come to you if you have a question. Hi. Have you ever been pranked on? Ever been pranked on on the show? Too many times to count. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you work with John Barrowman, I mean, it's just bound to happen in your first 20 minutes. Every day. <laughs> Pretty much. Next okay, question. Hi. Um, what would you say uh, would be your, for each of you, would be your favorite um, sort of scene, moment, or episode that you shot? So, before the post-production. Um, my, my two favorite moments, I'd have to say, are one, when I got to shoot Oliver in the arm when he was being all evil in Raz Ghoulie. It was real cool getting to do that. Um, and then two, probably, um, that like last fight in the prison with with uh, Malcolm when like I'm trying to actually kill him and I he gets me real good, <laughs> um, but it's because like I love doing the action stuff. They let me do as much of that scene as like they've ever done. Actually, it was really great and working with John is always hilarious. So it was great. <laughs> uh, mine was end of season two, the se uh, season finale when the Mirakuru soldiers are running in the tunnel towards Team Arrow. Uh, the reason why it was my favorite, because a lot of times when you're doing the stunts and stuff, like there's excitement, you're getting to do all this stuff and it's a lot of fun, but a lot of times you're kind of faking the intensity of it. But it was one of the few times where as you're watching about 30 men 
in these masks running straight towards you in this tunnel that's very compact. I was like, there was that actual surge where I was like, oh, let's do this. It was <laughs> so much fun. So it was a real, and then I was hoping that they were going to remember to stop before they hit me. <laughs> I bet. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask about um, Supergirl joining your little family on the CW and how you felt about doing some crossover episodes with them. Well, I mean, I think they just did announce the fact that we are going to do some crazy, intense Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow crossover. Somehow, I don't know how, but it's going to happen. Um, we're really excited about the fact that there is now this whole universe that we can actually have the ability to hop over to. The idea of having it all mashed into one episode with four shows just seems pretty amazing, as well as hard to pull off. So I'm really excited to see what they got for us. But we're very stoked about it. Next question. Hi, guys. Right. Um, I was just wondering, do you think Thea could take over from Oliver eventually? I mean, yeah, guys, right? Duh. I mean, hasn't she already basically? I mean, really, <laughs> she can like handle herself totally on her own. She's like her own individual badass woman. Question? Uh, when Laurel died, did you feel anything in person? I will say, and anytime people bring that up, I get these really painful goosebumps. They're not like the fun kind, they're the sad kind. Um, whenever we lose a, a main character on our show, um, especially the two biggest, or three biggest moments, honestly, were the Tommy in season one, Moira, Susanna uh, in season two, and then now Katie. Um, it's like losing a limb. It, like you really, you, you, you try walking to work the next day when after it's all done and it just, it doesn't feel the same and it takes a very long time for you to get used to it. It, it really is like losing something. And I'm very happy that we still are using her on the flash. And I really hope that I get to do some crazy, like, World 2, Earth 2 weird thing with her. And I love Katie more than anything. And it's, it's yeah, it's, it's really tough, man. It's not easy. Maybe in the crossover. Yeah. Uh, next question. Can either or both of you do British accents? Well, I know you can, but I, I, like, I don't know if you can as well. Uh, no. I actually grew up here, and uh, <laughs> so something that people don't know, I had to take eight years of dialect coaching to remove my accent, because um, I lived in Chelsea when I was a kid. But uh, if I do it right now, it'll never go away. <laughs> it, um, it's like John Barrowman, because everyone knows John's a Scot, and he never, ever pulls it out. He sounds as American as can be. And he only pulls it out when it's, he's talking to his family or something. And yeah. Uh, next yeah. question. <laughs> Do you think Roy will ever get a robotic arm? Roy, get a robotic arm? Uh, yes. I, I would <laughs> hope so, but also that scares me because what if his robotic arm decides to work against me and like in a hug, he just like crushes me. Yeah, like Terminator style, just kind of takes over. Yeah, it and might has happen. his own personality and entity. That's scary. And then his other arm would have to fight the robotic arm. Oh my god. And that would be a really weird fight choreography. <laughs> yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice question. <laughs> so, Katrina already has a character in the Batman tabletop game uh, where she's a mobile shooty uh, objective grabbing assassin. Thea hasn't got one yet. What sort of traits and aspects? Would you like to see Thea have in a game? Huh. I would just like her to be represented as her badass self, you know, holding it down for women like they do on the show. And uh, if they could incorporate some of her really cool sword play and put it a little bit more in the show too, that'd be pretty cool, you know? I wouldn't mind that. I could see it, yeah. Yeah. You guys are amazing at the fight choreography as well. You really sell it. Okay, next question. Hi, uh, do you think we've seen the last of Lonnie Mates from Anarchy in the series at all? What? Wait, sorry? Do you think we've seen the last of Anarchy at all with yourself? Oh, I do not know. Nice shirt, by the way. Yeah, good shirt. Um, you know, that storyline is really fun to play with. 
and I can't, I hope not. That's all I gotta say, I hope not. I don't know the answer to that, but I hope not. Okay, last question. Yes, shout out from Denmark, and also, <laughs> uh, what's the most fun you've had on set? Uh, ooh, every day? So every I, day was, I, I was doing this scene uh, where basically uh, Nissa is taking over She's basically defeating Malcolm Merlin, and she's taking over that, that whole thing where she became uh, the, the new Rachel Ghoul. And basically, she had to run in, but there were three cues that were going, and it was action, stun action, go for the random assassin that had to run in, and then there was a third action where my character ran in with a couple of assassins behind me. And just because it was chaotic, and every now and then they would kind of mess up, and every now and then I would mess up, there were so many takes that we couldn't use because they would call action. And all I know as an actor, as soon as we hear action, we're like, oh, go. It's like like dog, squirrel. Like That's kind of how we are. <laughs> so I would hear action. I'd be sitting there, blah, 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 action. I'm like, ah! And I would run in, and it would be the completely wrong part, and I would stop. Oh, sorry. And then all the assassins would slam into my back because as soon as I go, they're like, oh, we go because we're all like trained morons. So... <laughs> So it was just take after take where I kept ruining the shot because I would run in, stop, and then everybody would slam in behind me like the Keystone Cops, and I'm like, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> like, I really hope that's in the blooper reel. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had a really great time, and I'm sure all these guys have listening to you. I have one final question for you. Nissa versus Thea, who would win? <clears throat> what do the fans think? Okay, shout for Nissa. And shout for Thea. No. Oh, that's like a draw, I think. I feel like they would become friends, possibly kiss. And yeah, I turn for her. <laughs> I just want to kiss everyone. <laughs> I would definitely turn for her. I'm sorry, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, uh, we are going to end this panel. And it's been fantastic. Everyone, please say a huge round of applause to our panelists, Willa Holland and Katrina Law.